Tired of zombie invasions? Wanting a little help on your village raid? Wanting to tell a creeper to just get off your lawn? Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is K Turrets. As you can see from the selection, there's quite a bit to choose from. The bottom half being land-based, the top half being more adventuresome drones. These are the turret styles. These are those that will actually follow the player or can just kind of work around in an area. They're craftable things. To give an example, I have a cobble turret here, and it is made with some cobblestone, a dispenser, and a bit of steel ingots. These are new items. You are not going to find them in the world. You are crafting them from semi-finished steel ingots being smelted in a blasting furnace, and these semi-finished steel ingots are made from just regular iron combined with a little bit of coal or charcoal. I have a village here that I've set up with several small defensive stations just so that we can better show off what some of these things can do. As I have a cobble turret, I'm going to place it here on top of this oak slab, which is actually on top of an oak plank. The reason I'm showing this is because a lot of the time you cannot place these things on top of a half slab to give it that extra half slab height. Well, guess what? You can. And if you break the slab, it will fall down. It is an entity. These are not just blocks anymore for some, uh, as many mods might have some kind of turret function. These are actually entities, and you can interact with them in a multitude of different ways. But let's get started with the basics. This little cobble turret is going to be the cheapest of the bunch, costing you just more or less a bunch of cobblestone for the most part, and a little bit of steel. Right-clicking on it, you then gain access to its inventory, and this is just its ammunition area. So you'll put in a bunch of cobblestone, and it can then start shooting entities as they come nearby. Well, what entities? I don't see it shooting that nitwit over there. Well, that's probably good news. It's not set up to attack any kind of passive mobs. It will attack some neutral mobs, like uh, spiders and stuff, by default. But if you want to customize it further, just sneak right-click, and you have this huge list of all the things that it will shoot. And yes, it will shoot creepers as well. You can add new entities on here if there's some kind of modded type that it's not looking for. And you can also reset them, clear the list. If you click dismantle, it exits out, drops all of the cobblestone that it had in it or the ammunition, and turns itself into a little uh, cobble turret ball. But if you notice here, this is the one that I placed. This is the one that I have now. It has a UUID, which means it is keeping all of the data from when it was originally placed. So if I hit this turret, you notice it now has 59.09 health out of 60. It has a little bit of armor as well. And if I sneak right click and dismantle this one, the new cobble turret, when placed down, is going to retain that amount. So me being in creative, I'm just creating duplicates of these things, but know that it will retain its uh, health, and you can heal it the same way you can another entity with healing potions. For example, I've got a splash potion here. We'll throw that down, and it is healed. Now, enough about that. Let's actually put some ammunition in this thing and see it at work. I've got two of them here, and for good reason, because I actually have set up a hopper, and then I put down this cobble turret. This allows me to auto-feed this inventory. Now, I currently have a little bit in here already. Let's actually take this out. So we've got even amounts, all right? We've got stacks in all of them. And as this thing shoots, it will start using them up. I have two of them nearby. I'm going to spawn a husk over here near these villagers and we'll see how it does. There we go. Husk is spawned and it they both start shooting, taking out the target. It takes several hits, but it does pretty darn good. The only problem is, is that something could get in the way like that sheep there, and get killed. Or villagers, or just about anything else, including other turrets. So you're going to want to be careful when you set these up, because if you have them shooting at each other, they won't live very long. Now they will take damage, mobs will target them once they start getting hit by them in most cases, so that is something to take into effect. You'll want to place them in a point of advantage where they are less likely to be attacked. And just to show off that we now have 50 cobblestone left in here because it has been actually feeding it out. If I pull this out, you can see it's starting to fill automatically into this cobble turret. So it's really nice that you can automatically feed into these entities as well. So let's move on to the next one, the bullet turret. 
The bullet turret is made with a bunch of that steel ingot and the dispenser. That's the same recipe for all of the turrets. The only differences are really going to be on the left and right of the dispenser. In this case, an iron nugget and a gold nugget, because that is the ammunition type that it uses. Gold nuggets and iron nuggets. This is what are considered bullets in this case. And the gold nuggets are going to be a little bit weaker than the iron nuggets. And it will use those in the left first going from top to bottom. So in this case, it's going to shoot a bunch of gold nuggets at an entity that I summon out here. And just to show off the range, this is actually at maximum range. This is about 32 blocks out there. It's pretty darn good, if I do say so myself. You're going to have a really good shot range. Now let's switch this around so that the iron nuggets are first and see how good it does with shooting these entities now. Now it does actually do three hits in both of those cases, but it did do a little bit more on the iron bullets than the gold. It just wasn't uh, determinable by that entity. Now, if for some reason you do want to actually uh, further change this, this here, the immobile, this means that if I make it mobile, I can actually push it. So I can shove it a little bit. Then I can go back in here and make it immobile again. So then when I try and push it, nothing happens, I actually run into it. So this is something that you can keep in mind. This is the same with the drones as well. And it's just a matter of if you can push it or not. And you can also turn it on other players and you can claim the turret. By claiming the turret, it becomes yours and will protect you. This is much more appropriate for when it is a drone than it is a turret, but this just makes it yours. If you notice, it's no longer there anymore. And it says no team, choose which entities to remove, and so on. The integrity, everything on here is pretty darn handy and really straightforward. Next we've got, you guessed it, the arrow turret. This one is actually a little more customizable than some of the other ones, and I don't mean in this menu here. I'm meaning more along the lines of its ammunition and the fact that it actually requires some sort of bow. It will use the durability on there, and when I say some sort of bow, I also mean a crossbow is applicable, or an enchanted one. Now in this case, I've got a whole bunch of arrows in, in place. The projectiles are going to be a bit slower, but they have potential to be a lot stronger. Now here I've got a regular bow. Nothing really fancy. I'm going to launch this. A creeper comes out here, and you notice how slow it shoots these. It's not as fast as a player, and the creeper seems to be outpacing it using a lot of its ammunition. As soon as the creeper holds still or goes more in a like straight line towards the turret, it then can do a lot more damage. Taking this into account, well, let's switch it up with a crossbow and see if it does any better. Well, the speed that it shoots the projectiles is the same, but it actually took that creeper out in less shots. The crossbow actually has a 20% damage increase over the bow damage. So that's something to take into account. But the bow itself can be enchanted. This does work with power going forward. The version that I'm on, there's a glitch that's preventing power from actually doing extra damage, but it should be fixed in the next version. But in this case, I've got Flame and Punch 2. So you could have this mixed in with some of your other turrets, and it can make sure to keep your enemies that may be attacking, specifically in raids or something, farther away and perhaps even on fire or doing a lot more damage. And now we come across the brick turret. This one is actually pretty darn cheap because you just need some smelted bricks, really. And it accepts multiple ammunition types as well. Brick turrets accept nether bricks and bricks. Nether bricks actually do more damage. So you will have had to go to the nether or strip yourself some of those uh, different nether uh, portal remnants of its contents for some early game ammunition. But we're going to try this with a drowned popping up over here and the regular brick uh, stuff, ammunition, and you can see here it is making short work of that <laughs> drowned in that case. But let me actually switch out to the nether bricks, and it'll be a little bit better. There we go. And you saw it took out three shots instead of four. The nether brick definitely does a lot more damage than the regular bricks. And here we have a very fiery one, the fire charge turret. This one here takes fire charges, which of course are not exactly the cheapest ammunition to come by, does damage with them, and sets enemies on fire. So I've got it so that there will be a spawned enemy over there. We can toss down this, and there we go. It then launches these and takes out the enemy quite well. It also, adding the burning effect, is just another alternative for being able to use like an arrow turret if you want. But 
Yeah, you're going to want to be careful because, yeah, you see it's not actually locking onto this small baby because it cannot see it. That's one of the advantages of all these turrets is that so far they actually won't waste ammunition unless they think they've got a chance of actually hitting the entity. Otherwise, they will stop firing, which is really beneficial. It's going to conserve on ammunition and so on. But then as soon as there's a target within range, it will start attacking it. Now, they will sometimes group up on different targets. If we have a bunch of these and all of them are going to be filled with fire charges, one, they may hit each other being this close to each other. Two, they may end up targeting all the same mob and not necessarily attacking a variety of them, but sometimes they do. So if you notice, there's a line of these and they just kind of pick one or two of the closest ones. Sometimes what's attacking them, other times they will just focus fire on one mob. But yeah, you do have to be a bit careful with these ones because they do tend to set things alight which could be beneficial if you're trying to light the field on fire that the enemies are progressing through. So this could actually have a good secondary effect and not just negative ones. Just make sure it's not aiming anywhere near an area that might have, uh, well, wood or burnables nearby. And last but not least, you can see that this iron golem is very envious of the Goss turret, probably because it may have walked in the path and been hit a few times by it. So you're going to want to be aware of that. Again, another reminder, don't put this in the path of where friendlies are going to be because they may get damaged in the process. But the Goss turret requires ender pearls in order to be made and a special ammunition type. Not only does it look cool as well, but it requires Goss bullets. These are made with iron nuggets, ender pearls, and an iron ingot to make eight shots. But it's the heaviest hitting, most damaging of all of them so far. Now I currently have this little guy here gonna keep an eye on things, but let's take some cobble, see if I can toss it out here and create myself a quick and easy target. Yep, that, that happened very fast. It, it takes it out in two shots and that was a husk. Yeah, not a problem whatsoever. And you'll notice this guy's down 76 out of 100, so I'm sure he probably took a hit or two himself. And just by typing in here, you can see the different things and add different stuff to the list. Adding this to the entity list, it then will start targeting iron golems and making very short work of them. And then again, all you need to do is reset the targets and it should be good to go. It's back to its default setting and the, <laughs> that iron golem is no longer on its target list. Now let's talk about drones. These are all the different drone types that you have at your fingertips. They're all the same type and they're made in, with actually cheaper recipes. They've got a lot less health. They all have 45 hearts instead of 60 and they've got uh, just like a sliver of armor. So it's not really, they're not going to last very long in comparison, but they do have enough health that they can go with you for quite some ways. The fact that they also fly helps considerably because it'll keep them out of range of a lot of mobs in most cases, but not all. So to give an example, the cobble drone, it just uses a bit of feathers. The bullet drone, it uses the same recipe as the regular bullet turret, except a couple feathers in the middle. Again, these are just a bit cheaper to make than uh, any of the other ones. You can see the different recipes as we progress. Nothing really too fancy. We're going to use the cobble drone as our example one for this because they all really function the same just with different ammunition types and they look a little different. So just by right clicking, I can fill it and you notice it has less inventory space than the regular turret as well. Sneak right clicking, I can give it the same information on here, but it doesn't really work quite as well unless I claim it. Now, if I have ammunition in it and there is a hostile nearby, it will start taking action and attacking that hostile. But then afterwards, it just kind of stays still and doesn't go anywhere. You can see here. And again, you can change it mobile and immobile. Immobile, it's not going to go anywhere. Mobile, you can give it a nudge and push it around, which I recommend that you keep it on mobile because otherwise it's not really going to follow you. But sneak right clicking, you want to claim the drone. Sneak right clicking again, you can see it's set on following the owner. 
you can tell it to stay as well. So it's not going to go anywhere when you're running around. You can leave it at base. You can actually park it underneath a uh, hopper if you want, you know, be really crazy like that. And again, you can also dismantle it. It'll drop all of its ingredients and drop an egg that you can respawn it with. But let's have it follow the owner. And you'll start noticing, there it goes, it is now following me. And regardless of where I am going, whether I'm spawning down in the underground, it will start attacking hostile mobs. And not necessarily ones that I attack, just the ones that are on its hostile mob list. And you notice that this time though, it was down low enough that it could have been attacked. It's not a smart drone. It's a drone. It's not going to stay above and out of reach every single time there's a melee mob trying to get it. Let's go over to this tree, and I'm going to spawn in a skeleton. If I put this in place and it starts attacking the skeleton, the skeleton will start attacking back. Of course, I think that the cobblestone one will work, will uh, outclass it, but it did take a hit from that skeleton. So you can see that the mobs will target it, whether they're ranged or melee, once they've been hit by it at least once. And again, healing it is the same as before, just use healing potions. Another thing you're going to want to be aware of is that they can get a little bit pushy if you have a bunch of these around, or even if you just have one. They sometimes could push you over a ledge if you're not paying attention. But they are just a lot of fun to have around. You can have lots of targets for them all to start taking out. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, don't be afraid to stop by on Twitch. We stream there regularly. See you guys next time.